Good morning and welcome to Elmas Market, your daily dose of global financial updates. Traders hoping 2024 starts right where markets left off in 2023 were in for a terrible disappointment. The extreme risk asset rally which we witnessed towards the end of last year did not continue and stocks, currencies like Euro experienced a good amount of fall while yields rose significantly. US 10-year yield is making its way towards 4% once again. Good morning, JK. What's your take on yesterday's move? Uh, is it just a correction as investors book profits or do you think markets are scaling back their bets of the aggressive rate cuts priced in? Yeah, good morning, Suraj. Um, yes, I think it's not uh, really uh, so uh, logical to expect uh, the year-end uh, moves to continue into the new year unless it was a fresh move that has started in the last uh, few weeks. But what we had seen in the markets over the last four, five months is the fall in yields, fall in dollar and the rise in stocks. And that actually got extended towards the last days of December. Naturally, the profit taking will be the first uh, approach of players when the new year sets in as we have to reassess what's going to happen to the monetary policy, the economy, even as uh, interest rates uh, rule uh, high. So the first full-fledged trading day saw profit-taking action in all the markets. Yields bounced 10 basis points across tenors. Uh, surely market is reassessing its own expectation of Fed rate cuts. And I won't be surprised to see yields see stronger retracement in the coming days. Uh, in fact, we had seen good retracement in the German as well as the UK uh, central bank, uh, UK uh, bonds. Now, the logic is uh, central bank rate cuts will only come from a very weak economy and uh, 0.75 cut, which the Fed itself has projected, is also data dependent. And if the if inflation remains lower and the economy is soft, they will uh, stick to that 0.75. However, the market has gone overboard expecting 1.5% interest rate uh, cut. That will only happen if there is a big slump in the economy or if there is a recession or if there is a financial crisis. Now, apart from positioning, uh, we also see heavy supplies once again resuming in this year. Uh, we have as much as 50 to 55 billion of corporate bond issues that, that are lined up uh, this month. Now, uh, with the reality check on the economy, stocks also saw some unwind, but had a mixed close with Nasdaq seeing a red, uh, not a small one. And that's not surprising that it was the outperformer last year, but Dow managed a green close. Uh, Nasdaq's 1.7% uh, uh, first day route is the third worst uh, in the first day of any year since uh, 2001. And one of the main contributors for the for, uh, was the Apple stock being downgraded by uh, one of the large investment banks. Uh, we also had the PMI final reading on Eurozone, UK and the US. All of them uh, are confirmed to be in the contraction territory. In fact, uh, the S&P Funded model anticipates a contraction in Eurozone GDP for the fourth quarter. UK uh, is continuing to see, uh, you know, fall in output, the new orders and employment as well. Uh, in the US, uh, uh, it was revised lower to 47.9 from the initial reading of 48.2. And uh, the manufacturing conditions and output uh, continue to decline. Uh, in the US as well. Uh, and it, it was the same case with Canada where it was at 45.4 in December uh, from 47.7 in the uh, last month. Now the dollar of course had overshot in the short term with year end flows dominating in December, but that has started to see a correction too. Let's not forget that inflation is sharply down in Eurozone and UK as well. That means uh, they are expected to see some cuts indicated by the central banks. Uh, which you know, which they have not yet uh, communicated. So, pricing of expectations can see some more strength of the dollar, notwithstanding the underlying bearish trend for the dollar. I mean, dollar is structurally on a downward trend, but uh, the excess moves of last few days of December uh, can be reversed. Also, of note is that uh, Atlanta Fed GDP now estimates the Q4 growth uh, to fall to two point two percent from the previous estimate of 2.3%, indicating a slowdown in economic growth. It shows uh, private investment as well as exports are falling uh, substantially. 
uh, just to remind that the third quarter GDP official uh, by the government was estimated at 4.9%. Now, Wednesday, of course, we'll see a lot of data, ISM uh, data, which is more closely followed than the S&P 500 PMI, the job openings in the lab, uh, you know, George survey, uh, and also the Fed minutes, which will be uh, post our midnight, actually it will be Thursday morning for us right now. So Fed minutes will probably be scrutinized much more this time because of uh, the way market has been expecting and the dot plot that has indicated a uh, hefty cut uh, for the first time uh, in after several meetings. So uh, there should be some volatility around uh, the Fed meetings as well. Now the rupees uh, initial behavior uh, yesterday was not too different from what we have been accustomed to in the last several months. Uh, that is dollar bid by default. But the APU seemed to have uh, halted in its tracks just above 83.35 where PSU banks are rumored to have been offering dollars so much so that even a rise in the greenback elsewhere did not see USD INR break higher. Now expected large flows and strong growth picture justifies a period of performance by the rupee, uh, but uh, feel central bank also may not be averse to it uh, if backed by uh, genuine flows. Now, uh, in the, I mean, just to point out that this year, we have many, many elections coming up, the chief among them being Taiwan in January, Indonesia in February, India, of course, in April, US in November, and possibly UK uh, later in the year. Uh, one more uh, important development that you know could have some medium-term implications for the overall geopolitical setup is uh, the Saudi Arabia confirming that they officially became a member of the BRICS uh, uh, from the first January, and uh, that with that it, the BRICS uh, uh, you know strength has been uh, doubled. The expansion uh, is, you know, amplifying the group's demand and ambition to become a champion of the uh, global south and it's an affront to the uh, northern bloc, which is of, uh, you know, the G7 uh, countries. So let's see how these developments affect the uh, global markets. Thank you. Thank you, JK. And uh, yesterday's market action seems to be more driven by profit taking. Yields also saw a good amount of retracement. Uh, currently, it seems markets are reassessing their 1.5% rate cut expectations from the Fed this year versus 0.75%, which the Fed itself is projecting. So that's something, that's a theme that we'll keep following. Uh, we had the PMI numbers in Europe, UK, and US, which were all in the contractionary territory. And up, upcoming uh, Fed minutes will be the focus for the market since uh, Fed changed somewhat uh, its commentary in its last meeting. And for rupee, we were seeing uh, USD and our cap uh, being capped uh, higher than 83.35, with at around 83.35, there were a lot of PSU banks offering dollars. That's it from us today. Thanks for listening. Tune in tomorrow for the latest in the financial markets.